So, I've been practicing a lot recently to do a new Iron Man run, and after many many silly deaths and many mistakes, I figure I will do a video of all the tips I learned along the way, pretty much. I've been playing Gamma, so if you're using another mod like Vanilla Anomaly or Escape from Pripyat, there's gonna be some slight differences, but all the advice I have is pretty like general stuff, so it should apply for everything. Okay, let's start with the very beginning, which gonna be your faction choice. Most of the time, I will just pick whatever I feel like playing, but in Iron Man, it's actually a very important decision. Picking Ecologist, for example, is gonna make your playthrough extremely safe, as you're allied with most factions. The trade-off is that your progression is gonna be much slower, and as you cannot kill that many people and not do any assassination missions, you're gonna be pretty limited in the type of gear you can get, and getting high-end stuff is gonna be pretty difficult. On the other end of the spectrum, you're gonna find the military, for example, which is a very very aggressive faction. You're gonna progress much faster by basically killing everything in your way, but it's a much more high-risk, high-reward kind of playstyle. With your faction choice comes your starting point too, that makes a very big difference. A loner, for example, starting in Cordon, will have a very very smooth start. You'll be killing low tier enemies with little experience and bad weapons and very easy mutants. It lets you grind money and gear and updates very safely and progress very steadily. Someone choosing freedom and starting in army warehouses, for example, will have a completely different experience. You will face very quickly very high tier, very dangerous enemies, monoliths, mercenary, duty. If you're smart about it, it's a very good way to get great gear very fast and jumpstart your run pretty much. But at the same time, you increase greatly your chances of dying. Again, very high risk, high reward way to play the game. So you have to find a balance between your playstyle, what you like to play in the game, and your experience in general in Iron Man runs to pick the most balanced faction for you. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about the starting loadout. This can vary a lot depending on people's preferences, but I think everybody's gonna agree that the first item you should pick is binoculars. Is binoculars? Are binoculars? Anyways. Especially when you don't have access to a scoped weapon early game, binoculars are an item that is gonna improve your sub ability greatly. From spotting enemies that you might miss before they see you, to judging and analyzing situations from far away to see if you can jump into a fight without taking any risk, and so much more. Binoculars are the first item you should pick in any playthrough, and early game they're gonna be in your hands much more often than a gun. The second best item you can get this one is a little bit more dependent on the mod you're playing, but it's a gun or a weapon that's able to shoot 0.45 ammo. Used with Hydroshock rounds that are very cheap and easily available early game, this is your go-to to kill mutants. It will also do fine against low-tier stalkers if you don't have anything else on hand, but the main goal is to melt any mutant you meet. Even if you're extremely unlucky and you run into a Chimera early game, for example, if you have a gun with 0.45 Hydroshock ammo, like nothing's gonna be an issue. It literally trivializes any mutant's encounter. And if you're doing, for example, a lot of Butcher mission in garbage at the beginning to make money, that's the perfect weapon to get. Honestly, I like it much better than a shotgun. Okay, and let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is what I would call the bullshit death, or the unfair death. Pretty much any time you're gonna die because of something that's completely out of your control. To be fair, it really doesn't happen that often, and you learn with experience what can trigger it. But it's something that you're gonna have to accept, even if it can be very frustrating at times. The best way to deal with this is to do at the beginning a soft Iron Man by basically giving you a certain number of lives at the beginning of the game or just take the wish granter option that's gonna give you extra life every set amount of time. It's gonna help offset this type of death. But if you're trying to do an Invictus run for example, then you'll have to deal with this possibility. Personally, I think it's a topic that's a little bit overblown. If I look at my last 8 Iron Man deaths over more than 50 hours of playtime, I never had a single bullshit death. Everything was because of a mistake I made. But in some very rare cases, it can happen, so if you play Iron Man, you have to be ready for it. 
Obviously, if you're attempting an Iron Man run, you played through the game already many times and you know all the main missions, all the location, exactly what to expect, where, and so on. When I say know the game, it's more in the sense of using this knowledge to your advantage every time you can to reduce your chances of death. For example, when you do the mission to disable the Miracle Machine, you can plant an IED right here, because you know that a burr will spawn as soon as you turn off the machine. That's exactly what I'm saying when I say use your game knowledge wisely. There's many many events like this in the game that you can use to your advantage to reduce any risky situation you can find yourself in. Same ID with the Soda Giant fight at the end of the same mission. Actually, you can skip this fight completely, or if you want to fight it, just be smart about it, because you know exactly what's gonna happen. And doing it this way is gonna save a lot of ammo and a lot of medical supplies. The key of an Iron Man run is trying to be as efficient as possible and reduce any risk of death whenever you can. My last death was on a radar Brain Scorcher run that I thought I could pull off with limited resources, I lost a 20 plus hour Invictus run on that mistake. Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. If you think you have enough ammo, <laughs> no, you actually need twice that. Same for medicine. And using a lot of drugs gonna make you hungry, thirsty, and dizzy. You need to plan by taking lots of foods, drinks, and something that removes dizziness, like caffeine or glucose shots. Also, always use and abuse morphine. You don't need a lot, it lasts a very long time, and the damage reduction it gives is huge. You'll be tanking shots that should have killed you, and it will greatly increase your survivability. You should always have materials to repair your armor and weapons on the field. You will absolutely need it on long expeditions or missions. A weapon jamming at the wrong time in Iron Man can be the end of everything. And also it's a way to be more efficient, because small repairs often are much cheaper in the long run. As soon as you can take a breathing in a fight, take good care of your gear. Early to mid game, all your belt slots should have mutant belts in them. They give a ton of little bonuses that make a big difference when you start stacking them. You will want to move to better attachments or artifacts in the long run, but at the beginning, mutant belts are your best friend. Speaking of mutants, you have to know their attack animations to a T, it's absolutely necessary for your survival. You will not always see them coming from far away, and you won't always have time to find cover or high ground. So knowing how to dodge them reliably is extremely important. You can spawn them using the console in another game and train if you need to, because being confident in your ability to dodge the attacks in any situation is gonna help you keep your cool in a fight with them. Most of the time, if you panic, you will probably end up dead. Following this MID, there is no shame in rehearsing some parts of the game you know are risky before attempting them in Iron Man. I personally have a ton of saves in a regular softcore game in all the key moments of the game, so I can rehearse whatever I want before attempting it in Iron Man. It can go from making sure I still know the way in Lab X19 and not get lost, to simply make sure that I remember how to cross an anomaly correctly. There is no shame in being prepared. Iron Man truly has its own pace, it's probably my favorite thing in this game mode, you will take everything slow, walk around, scan the environment, pay close attention to the PDA newsfeed for other stalkers warning you about potential dangers. When you spot enemies, you will first get cover, think about the gear you have, if it's worth the risk to engage them. You will quickly learn to never sprint. Running will only lead you into anomalies or in a situation that's gonna kill you. You have to take things slow. And the more you play Iron Man, the more you're gonna learn to love this very slow pace. It's a very enjoyable and immersive way to play the game. Having a weapon with different types of ammo you can change is of course necessary to be able to face any situation. Personally, I like to have one close range weapon for mutants with HP or Hydroshock ammo, and a scoped weapon with AP ammo for stalkers. That way you're ready for any situation and you don't need to swap to the right type of ammo if you get caught by surprise. You're pretty much ready for any situation. A neat trick when fighting enemies and they take cover from you and they wait for you to put yourself in a dangerous situation to go get them is to turn your back quickly for a couple seconds. 
It's like the AI can see through walls and they see that you're turning your back to them, so they're gonna get out of cover and try to kill you in your back. And that's when you just turn back and kill them. This little trick helps a lot when enemies won't get out of their cover and would put you in a dangerous situation if you try to go get them. In the end, Iron Man is all about efficiency in my opinion. Learn which trader are the cheapest, who gives you the best prices for the items. I really like to have a stash full of loot that stalkers ask regularly to, so every couple of days I can talk to everybody and give a ton of mission back this way. It's a great way to make money and reputation fast early game. Do not use your multi-tool on everything, only break down the weapons or the items that have interesting parts that you're looking for and use the crafting system a lot, as much as you can actually. Companions are great meat shields, so get them as soon as you can. You can hire a lot of different people and dismiss them freely, so always try to get the most experienced one, and they make very good walking backpacks too. And don't get attached to your loot, you will die and lose everything at some point anyways. That's part of the experience. You have to see every death, even the frustrating one, as a learning experience that eventually makes you better at the game. Okay, all of this was some very generic advice in a way, so if you have some more specific tips on how to survive Iron Man Runs his Stalker, please, please share them. Anything that's gonna help me survive longer is welcome. Okay, stay safe out there, guys. Thank you.